Hello beautifuls. Today I wanted to talk about all the books that I have read over the last couple of years, all the health and diet books and all the latest fabs, and basically just pull out the nuggets. So what are they all saying that's similar? And at the very top of the list, all of the books, it doesn't matter what diet camp they sit in, they all talk about the importance of eating more vegetables. This is where we get the majority of our um, vitamins and minerals and all of our fiber. And it is just so important to increase the amount of vegetables that we're eating. Now, the, the, the stats show that very few people are making it. So how do we increase the amount of vegetables in our diet? Now, the easiest way for me to convey that message is to say, you know, let's swap out the pasta and have vegetables instead. You know, the, the whole the cauliflower rice and the cabbage pasta and the zucchini zoodles really does make an easy way to, to do that swap. And especially bread and pasta is such a refined um, processed product that you're replacing um, something that has very nutritional value, um, minimal nutritional value and minimal fiber for a really um, top pro um, product. So let's, let's just swap in the vegetables whenever we can. I mean, one of my favorites is, how do we get vegetables into breakfast? And you've probably seen on my feed somewhere, the kale and apple mishmash. Now, I'm still so excited about that, to be eating greens at, at breakfast. And of course, this is why the smoothies um, became so popular, because we were getting some greens into breakfast. Now, if you do do smoothies, please remember to put some good quality fats in there whether it's a handful of nuts and seeds or half an avocado. And that way you're just slowing down the, um, the absorption of those sugars from the fruit that you're going to be putting in there. Um, so it's not having such a, a, a fast effect on your blood glucose. Now, when it comes to protein, the biggest um, commonality is that we're eating too much protein, especially animal protein. So we need to be looking at our lean body mass or just bringing our protein, especially animal protein and, and fish and eggs, back down to what we've always talked about is that just the size of your palm, that's the size of the meat that you can be having three times a day. Now, I'm not saying that you should be eating meat three times a day, absolutely not. All of the research is showing, saying that probably animal protein once a day. Yeah, I know. We, you know, especially in Australia, we just eat a lot of meat. And look, the research is starting to show that it's, um, as we know, anything excess to our body's requirements gets turned into fat. So yes, any excess protein require, you know, that's excess to your body's requirements is going to be turned into fat. The other thing is um, that you, what, what they've started to realize is that the animal proteins is causing some damage that is aging us faster. So it's really worthwhile pulling back on your animal proteins and looking at some other types of proteins, some non-meat proteins like you know, um, legumes and, and um, beans and things like that. Because not only do they have protein, they also have some carbohydrates, but they have lots of fiber. Now, if you struggle with gas, um, obviously, you know, you, you either stay away from them or there are things that you can do to minimize that. And that's soaking, changing the water a few times, um, and even a pressure cooker can work really well for um, minimizing those side effects. Or just adding, you know, um, a quarter of a cup here and there just to, to make some changes. Yes, we need fat. That's the other big um, uh, realization that we've had over the last couple of years, is that we need the good fats. So we need the good fats from olive oil, coconut oil, um, avocados, nuts and seeds, and really move away from all of those processed so-called vegetable oils, which there isn't a vegetable in sight, uh, but they're the highly processed oils and they're the cheap oils that is in the processed and packaged food. So the easiest way to, to move towards a healthier diet is to be cooking your own food. Moving away from anything that's processed, packaged, in a jar, 
um, that's, that's got a whole list of ingredients in there. Just remember that those manufacturers are not looking out for your health. They just want to just get the cheapest, nastiest product on the table um, because they just want the money. So get back to eating as much as you can, cooking as much as you can, and really enjoying that process and teaching your kids. And um, yeah, that certainly is the best way to go. And if you're looking at doing dairy, you really, um, you know, there's both sides of the fence to dairy. You know that I've talked about that a bit. But making sure if you do choose to have dairy, you choose the dairy products that do not have any added sugar in them. So that's just a little bit of a summary of um, all the books that I've been reading lately and just pulling out what they all have in common. And vegetables, absolutely top of the list. Vegetables, whole fruit, not fruit juice. Whole fruit, two pieces a day. Getting back to clean protein sources and really healthy fats and cooking as much of it yourself from scratch. Thanks guys, have a great weekend and I'll talk to you later. Bye.